Hello everybody, Dr. Doyle here. Today I am going to discuss rainfall hyatographs. So what is a rainfall hyatograph? It's kind of a funny word that most of us had never probably heard of until you got into this class. This is an example of a hyatograph. So as the name implies, it's a type of graph and what it is showing us is the intensity of rainfall with respect to time. So here on the x-axis, we have time and on the y-axis, we have intensity of rain. I'm giving it here as millimeters per hour. So rainfall hyatograph can be defined as a visual representation of how rainfall varies over time. And it's important to know that a rainfall hydrograph is very specific to a particular location. Because rainfall will vary with respect to both space and time. So when we create and evaluate a rainfall hydrograph, we're looking at a snapshot of a certain particular location, space, and then it's how a particular storm uh, dis is distributed over the duration or the time of the storm. So um, when we talk about a rainfall hydrograph, there are three different parts of this hydrograph that are important which were mentioned previously when we talked about the characteristics of rain. So those three things are the intensity, the duration, and the frequency. So we'll define these three terms here. In, with respect to a hyatograph. So the intensity is the volume of water that falls in a given time. which is why you see the units of millimeters per hour, or you'll see it in inches per hour. And you'll notice here on this hydrograph example that I've provided, I've given a time of 0 0.5 hours or 30 minutes, but my intensity is still given in millimeters per hour. So you see here in the first 30 minutes or half an hour, I have an intensity of 10 millimeters per hour which means that in that first 30 minutes of the storm passing through, there were five millimeters of rain that fell. And this is measured using those measurement techniques that we previously covered. Um, and then in the next 30 minutes, another 15 millimeters fell, which is, is extrapolated for uh, to 30 millimeters per hour. The duration I've shown here, the duration of this storm, you can see goes from zero when the first rainfall drops to when the last rainfall drops. In this case, it was 150 minutes. And the duration is just the length of time, the storm lasts. So again, it's that first drop of rain to the last drop of rain, how much time has passed. In this case, we had 150 minutes as the duration of our storm. The frequency is a little bit more complicated and this goes into statistics. So you're going to need to think back to your statistics course here to think about frequencies. The frequency is how often to expect an event. So how often can I expect 
this particular storm that I represented to occur? Is it going to happen every time it rains? Is this a rare event? Is this a lot of, of, of rain for 150 minutes? Um, the frequency is going to sort of tell us that information. Frequencies are specified in water resources for both rainfall events and we'll see in a few weeks as stream flows as well. They are specified as exceedance probabilities. So what is the probability that you will see a storm of this much intensity in this duration? What's the probability that you get this much or more? That's what exceedance probability means. So this much or more is an exceedance probability. Or as what is called a return period. And I know I've mentioned this previously and I will continue to mention this. This is when you hear a term like a 100 year storm or a five year storm. This is the return period. And it's really just a frequency or a probability. And we'll talk in a subsequent video about exactly how to calculate that value. So once you have a hyetograph, you can also represent it as a cumulative rainfall hyetograph. And what this shows is just, as it, the name implies, um, how much total rainfall has occurred at any particular point in the storm, right? So at zero, it's always gonna start at zero. In this particular case, after 30 minutes, we've reached um, this actually should be, all of these should be divided by two. This is my bad. This should be, after 30 minutes, we have five total millimeters of rain, right? And then after 60 minutes, we have another 15. It's going to get us to 20. And then it's going to keep going up. You're just adding all of the total rainfall and it gets some characteristic curve, usually looks like this. Again, if you think back to probability, this is gonna look very similar to um, topics that you covered in your probability class. And so this shows the time in minutes and then the total precipitation. So here you can kind of see where more of the rain falls just based on the slope of this curve. You can translate this into what is called, it's just a um, normalized. So on the x-axis, you're gonna have T over T uh, total, the duration of the storm. And then this is gonna be P over P total. And it's really just going to be a very similar shaped curve, but it's gonna only go from zero to 1.0. And so this curve is gonna look like this. So I'm just normalizing this based on, okay, that didn't do a very good job. It should mirror the same shape as the one above. So it starts out shallow and gets steep and then approaches that line. Okay, so by the end, once you've reached the total duration of the storm, 100% of the rain has fallen, but you can see at any particular time when the storm is halfway over, how much of that percentage of that rain has fallen. So that is what this is. It's the fraction of precipitation that has occurred as a function of the fraction of the storm. Okay, so that is a rainfall hyetograph. In my next video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this frequency 
um, description and how we use that. And then I'm going to talk about how we generate IDF curves. So take a look at that next video.